Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus, Plus TV Africa. I beg your pardon. 1,423 and bad governance protesters held without bill or legal representation. The 10-day and bad governance protest may have ended, but the fallout will continue to be with us for some time. A comprehensive survey spanning 11 states reveals that at least 1,423 people were arrested and charged in connection with the demonstrations, according to the Nigerian lawyer. Many of these detainees are currently held in prison custody awaiting trial without access to legal representation or the opportunity for bail. Now joining us to discuss this is Nick Aguli, is a public affairs analyst, and Elvis Asia is a legal practitioner. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you for joining me. Good morning. Uh, good morning. All right. Good morning to everyone. Good morning. All right. Um, Elvis, I would like to start with you because you're a legal practitioner, you're a lawyer. So first, we're seeing these people that have been detained and they don't even have the opportunity for bail. They're just in the prisons for no reason. And I know that um, demonstrations like this, having to protest the human right um, in Nigeria. So I'm wondering why they're being held and they don't have the opportunity for bail. Is this even legal in the first place? Is it constitutional to, um, you know, to detain people and you're not going to let them go? Uh, well, it, it's not surprising to see, uh, you know, situations like this uh, with the Nigerian uh, security agencies, uh, the police and, and, and even the judiciary. Hmm. Um, it, what typically happens is that it's possible that even the lawyers or the Nigerian Bar Association that had said, you know, they were going to assist uh, protesters with legal representation may not be I mean, aware of this um, uh, arraignment, uh, so to say. And it's also possible that this wasn't even an arraignment. It's also possible that it was just a mere, what they call remand proceedings, basically to legalize uh, the continuous holding of people. Uh, by the police until um, there's a proper situation for trial and all of that. Uh, this is grossly unconstitutional. The, the constitution makes it very uh, clear and mandatory that as part of the fair hearing facilities that, that should be available to litigants is that they should be entitled to legal representation. And um, again, apart from that, even when you don't have a lawyer, a bay is supposed to be automatic unless yeah. it's a keep capital offense. Uh, maybe in, in the murder case, or some serious cases, but in cases like this, bail should be automatic. Uh, magistrates should grant bail and, and put the conditions there. So whoever, if the accused persons meet the condition, then they will be released on bail pending when uh, their cases are determined. But unfortunately, well, we have situations like this where uh, people are heard like this, and you have so many people awaiting arraignment, not even trial, <laughs> because I don't even think this was an arraignment. Uh, you know, because I've looked at the report, it's not very clear whether it was an arraignment or a remand procedure. But from my experience, uh, in practice, this is perhaps this is possible. This was a mere remand proceedings, just meant to hold these people, and it is grossly unconstitutional. There should be a clear, uh, you know, a practice where uh, uh, accused persons like this are afforded legal representation. Whether if they cannot afford one, the state should provide one. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that, that, that should be the standard in a civilized society uh, where the human rights are, are guaranteed uh, by the constitution and international instruments. So it's important that people should be afforded uh, the right to legal representation, whether or not they can afford it or not. But it's unfortunate that we're having situations like this. And this is what you get uh, when you have uh, politics, so political, politically motivated uh, prosecution. Um, yes, it is. you have the right to go after those who have violated the law, uh, in the course of protest, because uh, the right to protest, though constitutional, is also not a license to become, uh, uh, you know, to destroy properties and yeah. uh, loot, uh, we saw in some places. You have a right to do that, but you have to do that within the confines of the law. You cannot say protesters were acting outside of the law, and you on your own, you are, you, under the guise of uh, uh, implementing the law, or also violating the law of the land. That's, that, bring, that breeds chaos, uh, and, and it's, it's quite uh, unpalatable. Hmm.
All right, because I know that something they've always said is bail is free. So sometimes you wonder that if bail is free, then why are people being held? And I'm sure there are so many people who are even in our um, in in these prisons that have done nothing wrong. Maybe not um, not with this protest that has happened, but there are also other people that maybe they've just been at the wrong place at the wrong time and they were picked up. And we're hearing um, cases whereby they're sent to prison for something that they don't even know anything about. But bring Bringing it back um, to the protests, I want to I want to hear from Nick Aguli. With this that has happened, right? Do you think that it is a political move in a way to subdue the people? So, of course, um, you want to protest. Well, that's fine. But we're going to do this to let you know that you shouldn't do it again and you should be scared of us. So, is this some level of submission by our politicians to ensure that people are even scared to go out to protest again whenever they are not doing the right thing? Uh, thank, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, first of all, there is a big problem with the headline. Mm. If you say you have charged to court protesters, it means you are not a democracy. Mm. Because a democracy has to allow protest. <laughs> protest, as my co-panelist said, is a constitutional right. So the headline that says Nigeria is trying protesters, protesters have been charged to court, protesters have been arrested, it doesn't even sit well if we want to say we're a democracy. You don't do anything to protesters because protesters are actually doing a legal thing as provided by the laws. You take action against criminals or like... The, the headline news today in the UK is that the government has activated emergency measures to prevent overcrowding by rioters. So they use the word rioters, not protesters. Because if you riot and damage property, you have moved yourself into criminality. So I, I think, first and foremost, both the media and even the government and everybody, the world cannot be listening to us. And we are saying we arrested protesters. You know, we put protesters behind the bars. No, no, no. It, it, that connotation is wrong. So let us just have the fact, which is the government must provide cover for those who want to protest. Mm. It's the government's duty to provide cover for them to ensure that there will be no breakdown in law and order so that these people can protest peacefully. It is also the government's duty to arrest and prosecute those who are found to be perpetrating any form of criminality. You know, so or at the protest, the security agencies have to distinguish between those who are peacefully protesting, maybe marching along the way or singing their songs, and those who are entering shops, entering people's property, you know, uh, you know, touching people's cars and all. Those are not protesters. Those are criminals who mm. should be arrested and dealt with. If we don't do that, then, like what you have said, can have some grounds to say government is taking action to scare people from embarking on this constitutionally provided right of protest. And that is not right. You know, if we say we're a democracy, we have to have the ingredients of democracy in that soup of democracy that we're cooking. Else, there will be nothing for people to, to eat from there. There will be no democracy dividend. Hmm. All right, Elvis, so how do you think this would impact the people? Because, um, you know, there are people that, that have even said that if nothing is being done with all of the things that they've listed that they want to happen, um, by October 1st, they might just go out into the streets to protest again. And now, I think as of last week, some of our politicians, they tried to pass a bill that says um, you would be prosecuted if you try to insult the politicians or if you try to protest and all, even though the bill did not get passed, obviously, because there was an uproar against it. 
protest. But how do you think now this impacts the mindset of people um, when it comes to protest and when it comes to standing up and speaking for their right? Well, it, it is clear that, you know, government, you know, it's always been like that um, in this country where government tries to uh, emasculate the people. Mm. Uh, in government that attempt to bring people to subjection would use tactics like this, arrest uh, lawful protesters, even people who had no business with protest bars, they were just unlucky to be around the area, they've been thrown into jail. And so the message that is tried, that, that has been sent is that, you know, if you go, if you try this next time, you are going to face similar consequences. Mm. But what I want to tell politicians and our political leaders is that the truth of the matter is that no army in the world, no government in the world can stop the people uh, when they are hungry. No mm. government in the world can prevent people from protesting. Because if you don't allow peaceful protests, what you're going to have will be a violent war. Mm. And, and we don't want that. We don't want that, which is why it is important in a democracy, and the constitution of democracy at that, that you ensure that there is you know, a, a good environment for people to peacefully uh, express their, their dissatisfaction, their, their, their wishes, uh, and their aspirations to the, to the government. If you don't allow that, you're going to, you know, eventually, uh, you know, because there's, there's, a, there's a limit to how, how much people can bottle up. Uh, we have seen this historically in so many parts of the world where people are emasculated, they are, you know, uh, brought subjection, but it, it will get to a boiling point when, you know, you can no longer hold it. And so uh, government, you know, needs to be advised that this tactics, you know, is not really going to work in the long term. Because you cannot really stop the people, you know. If you say you want to stop the people, like rather than you know looking for ways to address the concerns of the people, I mean, the truth of the matter is that whether we like it or not, even uh, those of us that are, are gainfully employed or working, everybody is uh, feeling the pangs of this administration. And so, people, uh, you can't stop people from crying, you know, when when you when they have been beaten. And you might try to model it up, but at some point, you are going to have a serious uh, crisis on your hands. So it is, it is important that government, you know, uh, refrain from this, uh, 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 you know, undemocratic antics in attempt to prevent people from protesting. So uh, yes, the people, uh, you know, we feel oppressed at the moment. But you know, at some point, they, uh, we're already hearing now that uh, there's already another planned protest in October. And how are you going to stop that? With all the crises in the country, you don't want to have a, a situation. Uh, you don't want to have riots on, on your hands. And riot usually arises from government suppression, from government emasculation. And that's what you get. So it's, it, it is hoped that, you know, whoever is um, uh, at the helm of affairs today would, you know, understand this basic fact of human existence so that we don't have a crisis situation, you know, in our hands in the, in the, in the, in the very near future. Yeah. I would say that it's, it seemed to me, it's almost like beating a baby and telling the baby how to cry. So you beat me, you emasculate me, you tell me um, I cannot get anything, but still you're telling me not to express myself. You're telling me not to cry. Um, and I don't know how that works because if you're going to push people back up against the wall, at some point they would revolt and then it turns to anarchy and that's not even what we want because I'm sure the people who are going out to protest, they're just trying to lend, you know, just put out their voices and express how it hurts them that, you know what, we have a nation that is blessed with so many things. Why can't we just get it right? And um, uh, Nick, I want to ask this because this, the, what stemmed this whole thing in the first place is end bad governance, right? There's so many things that people are complaining about Nigeria from our good, from our healthcare system to education to um, infrastructure to food to insecurity, and they're saying, you know, the politicians are not doing the right thing. In Instead, they are making so much money. And now we've even gotten reports that a, a, a senator earns about 21 million naira monthly. And these are the same people who will tell you that, you know what, just hold on there. There's going to be a light at the end of the tunnel and, and all of that. So how do you think for, for people to come up and say we need you to end bad governance, isn't that supposed to be a cry for help? And aren't the people, aren't the politicians supposed to take this as a wake-up call to ensure that they are doing what is right by the people? Yes, of course. That is what their calling should be. Uh, a politician should be there to serve the people. Mm. And the interest of the people should be his paramount mission while he's in office. 
And the Constitution of Nigeria also says the primary duty, the primary obligation by those who are in government is to provide welfare and security to the citizens. So that is what it is. But you know, I keep making this point that if you look at those who are in leadership today, right from the president down to uh, his appointees and some of the governors at the state level, they use protest effectively. Uh, we, we, are, we were in this Nigeria when these same people were on the streets, you know, protesting uh, a few subsidy removal um, in the Jonathan days, protesting uh, electoral uh, crimes by the umpire and all of that. And, and yet, they are now in office. And as they are in office, they don't want to hear anything protest. You can imagine that in a democracy, uh, people say, oh, we want to go and protest bad governance. And then government begins to scare the people. Government begins to, you know, you, you hear people like Asari Dokubo, uh, a supporter of the government, uh, openly threatening people that is going to visit violence on them. If they dare come to rivers to protest and things like that, 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 that is a crime that should be should be investigated. This should be picked up by the police and investigated because you, you cannot threaten people with violence. Mm. And the Inspector General of Police is sitting there doing mumu as if he doesn't know what is happening. You know, government is clearly showing um, apathy to this protest. And we've seen cases where in some states you will see government branded vehicles uh, being used to convey people who will come and disrupt protests and all of that. All these shenanigans are happening by the same people who use protests effectively mm. when they were in opposition. Right. What is the reason for this? The reason for this is simple. <clears throat> I always tell people one thing. Leaders globally, leaders globally, including here in the UK where I'm speaking for, will not deliver good governance to the people if the people themselves don't come to the table. I want to make this uh, case. People can quickly point me to this last uh, protest that happened. That Nigerians uh, tried to protest and it was brutally suppressed and people were killed. People will make uh, reference to NSAS and all of that. And I tell people that look, to liberate yourself from tyranny is never a day's job. You can ask the South Africans. You can ask the blacks in America. You can ask people all over the world. It's a marathon. It is, we have to have hands on deck. We, and meanwhile, I always also make this case that protest can be street and can be non-street. And people ask me, what is non-street protest? I say the Constitution has provided us the means to protest. For instance, a voter's card. A voter's card had dual purpose. One. It is used for leadership recruitment. But it can also be used as a form of protest, where you can protest against a government in power that is not doing well for you. Recall of National Assembly and State Assembly and even local government uh, councils, councillors is provided there. If today we have recall proceedings against the 109 senators, and the 360 House of Rep members all over Nigeria, a powerful message will be sent to them because they are the ones who should be the check on the executive. The Constitution grants them powers to remove executives who are not doing well. So that is not street protest, and I think it's an area that Nigerians need to begin to look at if the government brutally suppresses street protests like they did the last one. Mm. <clears throat> so um, I think one of the issues that um, people already had before the protest started was um, that the protest may be hijacked. And we saw what happened in Kanu. We saw what happened in several states. And of course, um, with all of that, that's why some people have been arrested. So um, Elvis, in, in, a, in a protest as such as this, how do you think people should go through it legally? 
in the sense that, um, you know, let's do the right thing. Obviously, we know vandalization, destroying of properties is a definite no-no. But how can people even go about protesting or expressing themselves legally to ensure that they don't get arrested at the end of the day? What, what, I, what I want to say very quickly is that if you look at uh, NSAS, for example, Nigerians have demonstrated that they can protest peacefully right. uh, without violence. Uh, we're in this country when people were protesting at the Lekki toll gate mm -hmm. uh, for days, and, 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 and it, was, it was even fun. Um, you know, at some yeah. point they were raising funds for, to assist uh, uh, people and all of that. It was, it was peaceful. Now, government cannot deal with that. So when you see violence in protests, it's usually because government has, uh, you know, weaponized the, 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 the agbarus and the towns and the street urchins uh, to foment trouble in order for them to come in. Because when uh, a protest is peaceful, like we have seen Nigerians demonstrate the, the capacity for, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. Because they, are, they will be exercising their constitutional right, they are within the right to do what they're doing. And so government cannot come in. So in order for government to come in, you see that government, you know, has even demonstrated, you know, uh, uh, express attempts to make it violent so that government can come in. They did the same thing in, in the NSAS protest. And we have seen situations in, in, like that, even in this particular protest. And don't forget that it is the government's duty and responsibility to, to provide the environment that will ensure uh, a peaceful protest. If government was, if the police and other security agencies were present and ensuring that, you know, nobody goes about looting, then you can stop those. But not, the, not those who are uh, protesting peacefully. The people who hijack protests, it's usually, in most cases, the government who, in a bid to um, uh, come in with, with security forces, arrest people, like what, what they are doing in many places, uh, would, you know, sort of introduce uh, violence into the, into the mix in order to do that. And so that has become the, the pattern. You know, people can peace, uh, protest peacefully by, you know, uh, uh, singing songs like we have seen, uh, you know, occupying uh, 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 public of, uh, places and, you know, expressing their, 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 their views. Um, and that's what Nigerians have been doing. I mean, the honorary Nigerian. But what you have is that government is the one who always does this, uh, does this uh, uh, thing about bringing in the criminals into the mix in order for them to not punish the innocent people. And at the end of the day, most of the people that are arrested are innocent ones. Those criminals, you know, that are that are being uh, uh, empowered by government in many places, uh, the, the towns uh, in Lagos, in in different parts of the country by the governors and all of that. Those ones are not. Those ones are not arrested because they are the ones responsible for all of this crisis, all of this rioting, all of this looting, with a view to bringing in the security. The ordinary Nigerian who just wants to air his our views, and we have seen that. So the challenge we have is that the people has always had the, 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 the will and the capacity for peaceful protest, but government is always the one uh, that come in to um, uh, uh, make it impossible. So the people sh shouldn't be uh, uh, deterred from, from protest, because unless we begin to engage government, you know, uh, one way or the other, we're not going to really get to where we want to get to. The reason why they've always had their way over the years is because people just keep quiet. People are afraid of, you know, things like this, arrest and all that. But you can't get justice without some struggle. You can't get justice without some uh, uh, um, uh, struggle that, like we're seeing now. Um, you know, somebody has talked about uh, using the voting uh, as, as, as a way of uh, exercising a peaceful protest. You know, and it's unfortunate that Nigeria has not really allowed that because we have seen instances of, you know, complete rigging of elections, People, the results will be declared at polling units, um, like we saw in the last election, when Nigerians would, you know, be at polling units, they'll be singing and counting votes, you know, having fun, yeah. and the results were released. About at the end of the day, when the results come from um, uh, uh, the electoral umpire, it seems inconsistent with what the people have have done, and that's really where the problem is. The problem is not that the people cannot express uh, peaceful protests uh, using voting. Uh, you know, but the problem has always been that it doesn't really translate because there's, there's corruption in the system, like we have seen in many elections. Mm. In those days, it used to be uh, outright uh, rigging, snatching of ballot boxes. Now it appears that we are doing it with our computers, and, and, and like we saw in the last election. So mm. you know, but we cannot, we cannot, we cannot stay away until we get it right. 
because the politician, as we as we have as we have them today, that's just there for themselves. It just you know, I mean, you say people should uh, have patience, people should be calm, and you are acquiring um, you are acquiring uh, 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 jets, you are mm -hmm. acquiring latest vehicles, and we don't see any sense of um, government. People in government are not feeling the, the, the pain. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in most parts of the world, you want to see that if you really want people to believe what you are saying, you start with yourself. You, you want you want to see court in in, in, in course of governance. Uh, but you, have, you keep uh, appointing people, appointing ministers over the, con the, the constitutional uh, prescription, which is supposed to be one minister per state. But today we have over 48 ministers, and these ministers have uh, assistants. They have all sorts of, you know, the way you put the co of governance together, it is far, it's way, way more than what you have left uh, to uh, meet the needs of the people. And you have the same thing at the state levels. You know, it's all you know. What we always we, the focus has always been the federal government. But you know, the bulk of the crisis we have in this country in terms of corruption and outright wickedness is actually happening at the states. Mm. They're the ones that have um, uh, cornered the local government funds. You know, over the, over the years, which has rendered that arm of government useless and uh, incapable of uh, meeting the needs, the basic needs of the people at the local level, at the, at the grassroots level. So we must continue to uh, press. Uh, on the government to do the right thing, either, yeah. either in terms of protest, street protest, not street protest, you know, writing, um, yeah. advocacy. We have to continue. And it's, it's very sad that during the, the during military, we, you know, we had more people actually uh, fighting with government than what we have in, in, in today. Um, you know, I mean, the, the point was made earlier that those in government now are the ones that were even protesting. I remember At that time, my, right. The former, gov former governor of my state, Adams Oshomole, who was always... Uh, you know, at the slightest provocation, it will, it, will, it will come up with a protest. But today, I saw him the other day speaking about against protest and uh, trying to justify uh, what is happening and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, we saw, you know, in 2012, perhaps the subsidy issue we're having now, if it was fixed the way government wanted to fix it at that time, perhaps we would have had respite by now. Yeah. And don't forget, you know, the heart of the crisis of the hunger that is inducing protest today is the issue of subsidy. Mm -hmm. And when the subsidy was removed in 2012. That's what the government attempted to do. The government attempted to set up a body that will warehouse all the funds, all the proceeds of, 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 of subsidy, and reinvest it in other areas of the economy. But today, we're not hearing anything like that. You know, in the past, we're hearing of uh, Vision 2020, uh, mm -hmm. Development Goals. What is the government doing? We don't even know the ministers. Mm -hmm. And so, you think <laughs> that you can just emasculate people and force them from protest? They're not going to be able to stop it. The people must continue, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to protest. Uh, like I like I said earlier, in, whether street, whether on the street, whether on the on the on the radio, on the television, or you know, on the internet, on social media, as, as we have it now, we must right. to put pressure on them. And whether you like it or not, these things are actually producers of results. We are seeing some results. Government yeah. is afraid right now of people, and that is what you need. The government should be afraid of the people, and not the other way around. Yeah, because I, I would always say that the office of the citizen is should be the highest office in the land. But I just talked with a bit when you were talking about like, advocacy, you were saying writing, and I'm like, would they even respond to that? Um, anyways, um, Nick, so I wanted to just get your final words because we have to go. How can we get out of this? Because, of course, I don't believe anybody just wants to leave their day's job to be out in the streets protesting. If you have a system that works for you, um, definitely you would be fine and you wouldn't even want to go to the streets. So how can the government learn from this? Hopefully, they, you know, they release all of the people that have been arrested. But how can they learn from this to ensure that um, they're looking at every single way to make sure that the lives of Nigerians are better? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, indeed, I believe that uh, these protests that happened all across the nation is a clear signal to the government that people are unhappy with yeah. their policies and that they are suffering in the land. So the message has been passed. And it is for them to now begin the rework of recovering our economy and pushing it forward. Mm. Uh, there are news headlines out there that petrol queues have returned again. Yeah. And this is sad because this is a country that is one of the world's largest producers of crude oil. Mm. So how can the citizens be suffering from products that come off this uh, crude oil. And it only requires the President Inibu taking decisive action on the refineries, for instance. Mm -hmm. So there are all sorts of low-hanging fruits that this government needs to take, take care of. 
Uh, you cannot run the government by palliatives, mm. by giving food to people and giving them a handout in terms of money and all of that. Mm. We, we need to run a real government. The president has to ask himself, why should we be on three to 4,000 megawatts of electricity? When South Africa, that has a population that is a fraction of ours, is on 60,000 megawatts. Yeah. You know, why, why are we not having machines on our farms mm. to increase farm output? Why are we still allowing insecurity to drive farmers away from their lands? Why are our steel plants down? Why don't we have rain in Nigeria? Why is there no water? You know, these are the questions the president has to deal with. Yeah. And by the time he's dealing with these questions, the economy will start booming. Because uh, by even increasing our power output from the current 3,000 to even 10,000 megawatts, as we saw in ABA and the geometric case, you will see the economy will start booming. Mm. And it is when people have jobs that people are going to be happy. Exactly. We don't run the government by giving people handouts. As it is said, teach me how to catch fish. Don't give me fish. Right. So I think that's a big lesson the, the government has to learn. Yeah, but hopefully. Lastly, okay. I, I, there is also a, a government agency. I, I believe their name is Legal Aid Council. They, mm. As we speak today, workers are that agency. And their job is to provide legal representation to Nigerians who can't afford it. Mm. And to hear that uh, people who were arrested uh, don't have uh, legal representation is not right. And this mm -hmm. is also something that uh, the MBA, to which my co-panelist belongs to, mm. should also do something. They are the conscience of society. Yeah. You cannot see people taking to court without legal representation, mm -hmm. and they are doing something very positive about it. Yeah, and just like Elvis said, you know, the state government, the state is supposed to even provide um, a legal representation for you if you cannot afford it. So it just seems like there's some foul play that is happening. That's the reason why, and they're trying to subdue people. But looking at the crux of the matter, I'm hoping that the government starts to put better policies in place because, um, like you said, we cannot live on handouts. We cannot live on palliative. When that is done, what happens next? And we need something that is more sustainable for our nation. I'm sure everybody wants the best for Nigeria. We all want Nigeria to grow because it's not just for us, but it's for our children, for the citizens that are going to come after us. And I hope that we're thinking of, you know, visions and things that can transform Nigeria into a better country. Gentlemen, I want to say thank you so much for coming. It's a pleasure discussing this with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. All right, we're seeking with Nick Agule. He's a public affairs analyst and Elvis Asia is a legal practitioner. And we've just been talking about the 1,423 people that have been detained um, and they lack legal, um, legal representation right now and they've not been able to get bail. We'll go on a short break. When we return, we'll be talking about the brain drain in Africa, analyzing the Jackpot migration phenomenon. Please stay with us. <laughs> 